Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here. Today we're gonna be sailing the high seas and exploring large swaths of the world in Endeavor, Age of Sail. In this game, the players are going to be using their buildings, using their tokens in order to control different shipping lanes and fleets on the board in order to take over different forts and establish a foothold in that region. You are going to be doing quite a bit and depending on what you focus on, you'll be better at some things it's not, and not as good at others. So you might be able to have a lot of cards in your... Uh, you know, your kingdom. You might be able to attract a lot of uh, workers to come sail with you. You might be able to build very fantastic buildings while someone else perhaps did not focus on that as much and won't have access to the same buildings you do. So there are a lot of different paths you can take, but every one of the actions in the game is extremely straightforward uh, to, to actually employ, to do in the game. So Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, I do want to mention this is a reprint of a game from, oh, I don't know, about 10 years ago called Endeavor, just Endeavor originally. This is Endeavor H of Sail. What that entail, entails is um, there's going to be a couple of variants in here. So it's a reprint, some slight reworking of some things, and then a, 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 a bunch of new things that were not in the original printing, okay? So without further ado, let's take a look at it. We'll come on back. I'll tell you a little bit more about it and what I think of it. Here's what the board looks like set up on the two, three, or four player side with all of the tokens randomized in their spots and the decks of cards in their corresponding places. The general idea of the game is that the players are going to be taking actions to deploy their tokens either to shipping lanes or fleets or things like that, putting their token in place, taking what was there and adding it to their stock in order to advance on their different tracks or to take bonus actions with the tokens. These out here come in two different kinds. The blue ones are bonus actions. The darker brown ones, these are going to uh, advance one of your tracks on your player board. And they are going to be playing multiple rounds. You play seven rounds in the game and at the end, then whoever's got the most victory points is going to be the winner. So, we've got, like I said, the board, we've got the buildings over here that you'll be acquiring throughout the game that give you bonus tokens, uh, bonus actions, and advance some of the tracks as well. And the players have, of course, a player board, which is going to look like this, with the four different tracks at the top, uh, a guide here for what a turn looks like, and then spots for your cards and your buildings right here. So, everybody is going to have one of those. Everybody gets one of these. So you'll go ahead and pop off the pop the lid on that. You have your starting building right here with the four cubes for your tracks, your tokens, and then the shields, which you use for the exploits variant in the game if you'd like to play with exploits. I'll talk about those a little later on, just briefly, all right? So, to set it up, we're all gonna get this. We're all gonna get our four cubes. We are going to put those cubes here at the beginning of the four tracks. And we are going to decide what which side of this opening building we'd like. The Occupy action or the Shipping action, which also has a uh, bonus symbol there. So I'm going to go with the Shipping action. That already gives me one symbol in this golden uh, track. And so I advance that one. And this is going to be typical for everything you do in the game. Every time you take a token, so say I take this token later on, I'm going to put it next to the matching track, and I'm going to advance that by one. Building, same thing. Cards, same thing. So these will keep track of everything you are doing in the game. All right. So now that I've done that, uh, we are going to go down this, uh, this uh, guide here for the round. Someone is going to be the star player. They'll have this very fancy crown. And then we go through these. So step one is acquire a new building. This is uh, limited uh, in level by the top track. The top track lets you know up to what level building you could buy. So the first two spots, uh, only level ones, level twos in here, level threes, fours, and then fives. This track also, by the way, translates into victory points. So that's another consideration as to why you might want to advance one, not just because you can get better buildings or more tokens and so on. 
So uh, we'll come back to the buildings in just one second. I'll show you those. Second step. So everybody does that and gets a new building. Second step, you get new tokens. Again, E equal to where you are on this track. In this case, I get two tokens. And I'm going to put them right here. And by the way, the opening building comes with one on that action spot. Next up, you are going to pay your workers, which is how many of these places you can empty and put back in your supply. In this case, one. So this comes off and I add it to my supply. Next, we take actions with the players using their uh, tokens and the actions on their buildings and possibly bonus actions on the blue tiles to deploy tokens, gather strength, and so on. And then finally, at the end of the round, when everyone passes, we check card limits. We can only have as many cards as denoted on this bottom track here. Uh, and that's the general flow. Do that seven times, game is over, figure out what your score is, okay? So I've gone ahead and gone through the first three steps. And then my next step, though I'm missing a building, my next step could be for my first action, for example, I could take a token, mark that I'm doing a shipping action, and then take one of my other tokens and put it on one of the ships out here. Oh, I want to take uh, this one. We start with only Europe in the middle of the map open. Take that, I take this token that was sitting there, put it on the corresponding track, and I advance that track. It's the next player's turn. And we'll go back and forth until we pass, all right? So let's go ahead and put this aside for now, and let me show you the buildings themselves, which I skipped over. So these are the buildings. You're going to have this nice tray to hold them all. And there are quite a few in each of the spots, though they are all the same, except for the level 5 buildings. Those are different from one another. And so at the beginning of the game, I can get any one of these three. This one gives me two, two symbols in building, but no action. This one gives me a shipping action and one symbol. This one gives me that symbol, which is a crate that translates to getting a card. To get a card, I must have influence in that area equal to the number on the card. At the beginning of the game, as I said, Europe is open. I could take either one of these because they have a zero. The next one's a one, and so on down to a five. In the locked regions, they begin at one, and uh, you have to have presence there in order to go and get those cards. The shipping, as I showed you, you just simply take a token and put it on one of the ships, again, in a space that's open, or you go to an open sea space in one of these areas, that's really only if you can't go anywhere else. Or you go to a shipping lane, which begins to open up one of the outside areas. So I could send it here, take this token. Eventually, these four spaces will fill in. And then that region of the world, the Caribbean in this case, will be available to, um, to be further explored. For you to put your tokens on other places, continue taking cards, and so on. All right. Um... And uh, the other one is Occupy. The, there's a couple of other special symbols, but the Occupy one lets you go to uh, these forts and take those over. You must have influence in an area before you do that. So even at the very beginning of the game, you are probably going to want to go to a shipping lane or uh, either shipping lane or just a fleet out here. And then now that I have presence in Europe, my second action could be to occupy one of these forts and get that token. So, going back to my example, uh, let's pull out my player board here. My first building is going to be uh, this one. I'm gonna take that one, which is called a market. Put that there. Does not adjust, adjust any um, tracks or anything. I am going to reset what I would have gotten at the beginning, which looks like that. And then I might, uh, instead of shipping for my first action, I'm going to instead uh, grab a card. Again, this can only come from Europe right now because it's the only one I can do. So I'm going to take this card, I'm going to put it right there, and I'm going to adjust the symbols accordingly. So I get one here, and I get one here. Great. Next time, if I have two buildings occupied, I'll be able to pay them both and take both of those tokens off. You have a spot here for governors. Governors are the card you get when a place opens up in the world, whoever contributed the most to that shipping lane, gets the governor card. That's uh, usually a very powerful card. You're going to take that, adjust your tracks. That symbol means victory points. And this spot can only have governor cards. 
Now, you could put them out here as well. And in fact, if this spot is empty at the end of the game, you're going to get three victory points. But it's an extra spot that can house a, a uh, governor card. So you might do that. All right. Uh, again, that's largely it. The game flow is pretty straightforward. Once you've got this up here figured out, you're going to be taking your actions. And the actions, as I said, are shipping. You can uh, take over a fort. You may attack someone else, which is rather costly. It'll cost you... Uh, uh, an extra one of these tokens that you're discarding out of the game just to replace someone else where they are. Uh, you can take an action which allows you to free up a building, or you can take the action that allows you to take a card, if you qualify for that card. And then check your card limit at the end, uh, which again is right down here. So that's the general flow of the game. You'll see some spaces out here on the board are connected lines between two previous, uh, two other spots. If you control both ends of something like that, say I control this spot and I control this spot, well, this is one bonus victory point. Some of them are little squares, that's just a bonus victory point. Some of them, though, such as the connection between this fort and this one here, are not just a victory point, but you also get the token connecting them. So you'll take that off as soon as you control both ends, giving you a little extra boost in the game. Now, uh, having said all of that, that brings us up to speed just about with the board and what's going on on it. Let's talk about the extra things you're going to get in the box, mainly the exploits. There are a bunch of different tokens and goodies in the box. In fact, as you can see here in the unboxing of it, it's uh, a very nice insert with plastic, you know, molded trays holding everything together quite nicely, and then lots of things below that. But the main thing that you are going to be dealing with and what everything is in service of is these exploits. A lot of those tokens just work with these exploits. You are going to shuffle these up if you'd like or select three of them. And you're, so you reveal three randomly or however you want, and they are going to be tied to two of the regions on the map. You're going to use the little included keys in order to mark. Let me see and grab my little keys here. So I'm going to use these little keys to mark what locations I need to keep an eye on so that I know when they open up, I take the key and put it on here. And once both of these are filled, then this location is going to come into play, give the players new options, new opportunities, new things they can do. These have all sorts of different feelings. Some of them are very confrontational. Some of them feel sort of like stock market manipulation. Some of them give you new places in the world with, uh, to, to, sh to ship to, to uh, you know encounter, bonus victory points, all sorts of different things, as you can see. So these are going to change the way the game feels a little bit and give you, especially in the end game, near the end game, give you new uh, avenues for play, basically. That's largely it, all right? I'm not going to go into them too much, but that's what they do. They'll, you'll, you know, set them up with whatever tokens you need and uh, go from there. So, for example, this one here, you'll send with a shipping action a token here. As you uh, later on send more of them, you're going to take a token. There are five shuffled on here. Those are in the box. And those are going to give you either a power right now. Uh, and you get rid of it, or a permanent smaller power that you may choose to keep. Pretty straightforward stuff. There's also some bonus victory points if you went here at all with your token. So, there you go. Uh, that's largely what comes in the box. Uh, that should give you an idea of how the whole thing comes together. So, let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. All right, so there it is. Uh, I will mention before I start here that I have played the original Endeavor, and I, I did enjoy it. I was a fan of it. It's a game I always thought was uh, beautifully streamlined and, and did a lot with very little, uh, with very quick turns, you know, and I, I appreciated that very much. I'm very happy to see it back in print, and this is a really nice edition of the game uh, with more content than was available originally, so... That's a bonus. That's good. That doesn't mean it's a flawless production or, uh, or something that I think is for everyone necessarily. But it is very well handled for the most part. So, let me tell you the things I really like in this, okay? Um, seven rounds is fast. So this game has a really solid game length. Even with the uh, higher player counts, you will, while it'll be longer than with fewer players you are going to have a turn come around to you so quick 
that you'll always feel engaged, and I like that very much. None of the actions uh, bog down the flow of the game. So, very good. The um, ease of play is quite high. The breakdown of the turn on your player board is very easy to grasp, easy to internalize, and then you're gonna, you're gonna put it into effect quite quickly, you know. And then, like I said, you're just picking a selection from, you know, an action from your, from your selection there, or maybe turning in a token, deploying one token or two, something like that, and you're done. It's the next player's go. Adjust your tracks, take a look at what you might do. Guess what? It's your turn again. I like that a lot. So it's very easy to get into. Tactics and strategy, I also think are, there are many different things you could be doing, but all of them are easy to understand. There's not a lot of, uh, I guess I'll say subtlety here. You can see what works for what you're doing and just try to get more tokens in that region or in that, you know, that area on your player board. Try to get up higher to allow you to do more, but also get higher victory points. Those tracks do translate to victory points. So the tactics are there, but they are not masked by mechanisms. I'm a fan of that. I, I think that's that works well for me. A um, couple of things that I still think are good, but were not flawless, okay? So the aesthetics, component quality, things like that. The game looks great, in my opinion. I think the components, especially the insert, are just fantastic. But there were a couple of issues. I've read that some folks out there have had a, a few more issues than I had specifically with this copy. But there were still some issues. Some of the player tokens came stuck together. So you had to pry those apart. There being sometimes a little bit of a color transfer on those. The amount of tokens seemed to be kind of all over the place. I, I believe you're supposed to have 25 in each. And I had one color had 20... What was it? Seven. Yeah, another color had 29. Thankfully, none of them were short tokens. But it seemed very random the amount i got not sure why but again for the most part not too problematic and i do find the the look of the game the aid on your player board all, all of those things to be um, smooth and to help play gameplay the replayability i think is again high this this gets a a positive from me my only issue is the exploits, the new thing, that I think are fantastic and are going to add to the replayability. Quite a bit, in fact. But I did not find them to scale particularly well down to lower player counts. It the, Less of the board opens up in games with fewer players, and so those three that you put into play, it felt like you had to work at it to make those options open up. And even if they did, it was normally pretty late in the game anyway. So um, that's something that is going to be a lot more dynamic in a game with more players. But with fewer, it does not make as big a difference, I found. So I wish that those... I don't know, I kind of wish maybe they were, they were tagged for player counts. Maybe some of them could um, be already active from the beginning of the game. Or, um, I don't know. I'm not sure how to fix it. I just wish that that was a more integral part of what's going on in the game with a lower player count. And then largely the thing I found the least interesting was just the theme. The theme here is, you know, it's fine. Whatever. It's more of uh, uh, what we've seen. It's never been quite handled this way. This smoothly, uh, yes, abstracted considerably, but also very easily handled. You know, taking turns and all of that is so smooth. But the theme is not particularly exciting, to me anyway. Overall, though, I think Endeavor is a really solid design. I enjoy this game a lot. I did back when it first came out. I still do. I like this production. I um, like all the extra stuff they've, they've thrown into the design now. So I have to recommend this one. I think it is solid. If you're not someone who is a stickler for theme... Yeah, even this theme, you know, even if you are excited about this theme, you're barely going to get it. This is a quite an abstracted game, as you can probably tell just from a quick glance at the board. If you don't care about that, and you want some quick tactics in your game, Endeavor will deliver. There's a lot happening here. Um, so, yeah, this gets a seal of approval from me. Certainly would recommend it. 
get yourself a copy of this one if you're looking for something nice and quick while still giving you a lot of cool options. So there you go. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks for checking this out with me, everybody. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.